All right, Matt. It is time for the most wonderful episode of the year. Ah, uh, yes. The holiday shopping list episode. Let's start with some holiday candy and cookies and some cheese and... Did somebody say holiday episode? Why, yes, we did, David. Welcome. You couldn't wait to get in here, could you? Crew member David has been kind enough over the last several years to come and sing us a special Trader Joe's Carol on our holiday shopping list episode. And a one, two, one, two, three. No, 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 no. This year, I've outdone myself. Is the satellite feed ready? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, coming to you from Chicago, we proudly present... The Canterbury Carolers. With no real intended bombast, we present to you at long last a brand new Trader Joe's podcast for the holidays are here. There's so much in store, so we thought we'd assist by way of recording this new shopping list. So sit back while we untangle all the treats that you can wrangle, like pretzels with jingle jangle for the holidays this year. There's stockings to stuff, but don't lose your calm. Just try our new gummy bear lip mask and balm. Our chestnuts are soft and chewy, our fondue gets nice and gooey, plus bites made from ratatouille for the holidays, that's clear. We'll keep ourselves warm with baked brion croot, then toast the new year with a platinum brute. With snack mixes that are awesome, Swiss cheese that's shaped like a blossom, plus a candle with cedar balsam, for the holidays are here. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Thank you, Canterbury Carolers. That was fantastic. And thank you, David, for your witty words once again. Let's go inside Trader Joe Ho Ho's. That's going to be hard to follow. I'm Tara Miller, Director of Words and Phrases and Clauses. And I'm Matt Sloan, the Marketing Product Guy. The holiday season really is filled with magic. And so is your neighborhood, Trader Joe's. You know, all these holiday products don't just magically appear on shelves. Every category team at Trader Joe's has been working on developing new holiday products since the last holiday season, and really even well before that. I mean, the official holiday tasting panel happened like in February of last year. Yes, that is correct. We wear ugly sweaters for Valentine's Day. And in February, we get together to evaluate what worked and what didn't from that preceding holiday season to figure out what we might want to try to offer in the season ahead. This year, we have a total of 473 holiday season products. And 407 of those products are returning, are products that we sold last year that we wanted to bring back again. It's pretty good. The other 66 are brand new products that we're trying for the first time this year. So we better get started. Let's start with snacks. And kind of the granddaddy of Trader Joe's holiday snacks is the step up to the snack bar mix, which is in a very distinctive black canister. You kind of look at the canister. It's like, yeah, okay, it's a snack mix, but you open it up and it's so the interesting things inside. It's, it's our cheddar rocket crackers, which you can buy in a box in a store, but here they're in the mix. It's corn chips with flax seeds, which are very interesting. Honey roasted peanuts, honey roasted sesame sticks, honey mustard pretzel pieces, and chili lemon corn sticks. I think of the snack mix as a great example of something greater than the sum of its parts. I think everyone has like a favorite thing that you hunt for in there, but everything's good. I wait for this to come back every season and stock up a little bit. You know, it doesn't have a super long shelf life, so it's not like you can save it for a year, but it's good through the spring. There was one component in there that had a little bit of spiciness, at least in its name. What was that? That's the chili lemon corn sticks. Okay, and that makes me think of the stepping it up spicy snack bar mix, which is the red canister, a companion Mm -hmm. product. And 
Again, mostly savory, a little bit of sweetness with a unifying spice to mm -hmm. things. So you're talking about uh, sweet jalapeno pretzel pieces and a pasilla chili sesame chip and spicy cheese corn sticks and chili almonds and chili lemon corn nuggets. And I will enter any room when I hear that. Have love. Exactly. Yeah. If you're having a, a gathering or if you're just sitting around watching holiday movies or, or you know, football games or whatever it is your family likes to do in the holiday season, oh, I love them. What? Yeah, I don't think it'll be so spicy as to turn anyone off. I think it'll be just enough to keep them coming back for more and more and more. It is a Moorish situation. So speaking of Moorish, we have the return of the sweet and salty snack mix. It's uh, a 12-ounce bag. It's a pretty substantial bag of snacks. It has mini peanut butter filled pretzel nuggets, half dipped chocolate covered potato chips, roasted and salted Virginia peanuts, and chocolate drizzled caramel popcorn. Like this, this is a treat. Like this is a family movie night kind of thing. It says there are 12 servings in the bag. Um, and you know, those are government regulations that say what a serving size is and what that means. For me, if I'm sitting watching a Marvel movie or say if I'm if I'm doing my 74th rewatch of It's a Wonderful Life, this this could very easily become a single serve for me. When I think about the holidays, I, I often think about special family meals. And sometimes when I was a kid, if we were lucky, it might even be at a fancy restaurant. And I knew it was a fancy restaurant because at the end of dinner, you would get an individually foil wrapped mint chocolate. And I knew, wow, this was something special. I'm a sucker for nostalgia, certainly, but we have a product that makes me think of that. I'm talking about minty cocoa truffles. These are a little chocolate truffle, um, and they're minty, and they're cool, and they're creamy, and these are so delicious. And that is okay. them there in their little box, their little green box. Those are really good. It's got a little crunch. Are you getting that? It does that? indeed, yes. And they're lightly dusted on the outside with with cocoa powder, so... when it's a beautiful, very ruddy red mm -hmm. cocoa powder. Yeah, and those are just a holiday season product. I mean, I would probably buy a few boxes of those and keep them on hand. Well, I'm right back with Grandma Mady at Rob Roy's in Newport Beach for a holiday meal. That's fantastic. Another one of those sort of nostalgic holiday themes is gingerbread. We, this year, have... Are these new? Those are new. These are new. These are dark chocolate-covered gingerbread cookie folk. Little gingerbread people covered in dark chocolate. These are not ginger snaps. These are similar to European, uh, almost like a Lebkuchen-style gingerbread. So softer chew, um, really nice flavors, all the warm spices. There's a lot of cookies in there. That, that is a... There's, a lot of folks in there. There's a lot of folks. You're going to love these. So many um, ginger ginger cookies, ginger snaps, gingerbread people cookies are really, really, really sweet. And this one is... it. You're right. It has all of those, those gingerbread spices and a nice, almost subtle ginger flavor. It's not super sharp ginger. Those are really good eating cookies. Kind of really want a cup of strong coffee yep. to go with that. Like That would, that would be, be an excellent pair. That chocolate coating is not quite a shell, but it's a nice contrast against the softer, pillowy cookie. Plus, they're adorable. Yeah. That's oh, good. boy. As we get ready to celebrate the holidays, I think we need a celebratory beverage. Something with a little sparkle. How about a Trader Joe's Platinum Reserve Sonoma County Brute? A sparkling wine. Okay. I believe the Canterbury Carolers referred to that as a platinum brute. Wherever you put the emphasis on the saliable, it's a great drink. Absolutely. And this is made in the Method Champenois, so the bubbles come naturally. This is not a carbonated thing. Those are actual bubbles that come about from the fermentation. Um, I think... Did I say Sonoma County? Great area to grow grapes with which to make great sparkling wines. It's a blend of Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and a little bit of Pinot Meunier grapes. It's classic. It's dry, a little toasty. I like this brute with salted buttered popcorn 
to be honest with you. Oh. We also have a rosé that is actually made with the same grapes in a slightly different order. Pinot Noir, that Pinot Meunier, and then a little bit of Chardonnay. And that, of course, is given when they're mashing all the grapes together and letting it start to ferment and soak. They give it a little longer contact with those Pinot Noir skins, and that gives it that wonderful blush color. I love a good Brut Rosé as a celebration thing and a glass. That pink color is so fun. Little hint of fruit flavor, a little more fruity forward flavors on this. It's not sweet, though. It is Brut, and in this case, that means that drier, a little bit more of a, of a bracing acidity here. If you're looking for a sparkling wine to serve for your family holiday dinners, or if you're looking for a sparkling wine to bring as a as a host or hostess gift to a, a holiday gathering, these two, the um, sparkling Brut and the sparkling rosé platinum reserve from Sonoma County, they're pretty impressive for the price. I mean, our, our platinum reserve line is fantastic quality, and we're bringing it to you at a price that is kind of unheard of for what you're actually getting in the bottle. Absolutely. The producer of these sparkling wines, they have their own label, and these same wines under that label is, uh, is a much higher price yeah. than at Trader Joe's. And, you know, when you think of sparkling wine, you almost always think of champagne. That's synonymous with sparkling wine. Of course, technically speaking, champagne comes from a very particular place in France, and it's limited geographically. It's physically limited with scarcity and increased demand. Costs keep going up. You don't have to have true champagne, although it's wonderful, to have a celebration. And the price and quality intersection on these Sonoma County brutes, the rosé and the classic brute, is phenomenal. These are, I think, a steal. A steal you have to pay for, a steal nonetheless. Okay, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. If your Trader Joe's carries beer and wine, it's the Winter Ride Double Bock Lager. We've, we've had this particular beer at the holiday season for like 15 years or more, but new this year, it's moving from a uh, six-pack of bottles to a six-pack of cans. So we're sort of making that transition back into cans. I'm going to make the transition into tasting this. Okay. Uh, within sort of German styles of beer, German lagers, there are different times of year to make different styles of Bach lager. So this is a winter double Bach. It's a darker heavier flavored malty type of Bach lager. It's really tasty. It's um, it's a little higher in uh, alcohol yeah. by volume. 7.5%. Uh, this would be great with any number of stews, roasted root veggies, things like that. And this is a really, really tasty beer. I love this. When a seasonal product like this returns season after season after season, there's something special there. You really have to earn your place on the shelf. Glad to see it coming back. That's like right up my alley, the dark malty. Mm -hmm. I think we need some appetizers. We do indeed, and we have something new, a really fun take on a classic dish, ratatouille. But these are ratatouille bites, and it's a frozen appetizer. Okay. These ratatouille bites inside the classic combination of tomatoes and eggplants and peppers, and they're slow-cooked, almost caramelized, almost jammy in texture inside. They are enclosed in a crunchy, almost breading-like shell. Yeah, it's like panko breadcrumbs on the outside. Exactly. They're good finger food. If you're having a holiday gathering and you're looking for something that's different, a little interesting, that might be a conversation starter, the conversation would go something like, what the heck is that? It's a ratatouille bite. Try it. And then, you know, you try it and the conversation might be over, but at least there's a conversation. Well, because everyone's mouths are full, but it yeah. will be delicious. Okay. All right. Ratatouille bites. By the time you hear this podcast, they should be in your freezers. You should be able to find them and they should be delicious. All right. What's up next? Well, also in our frozen section, we've offered this for many years now with good reason. This is brie en croute, and this is a ready-to-bake thing. So it does take some time in the oven, and it is a classic round of brie 
enclosed in pastry. I decided to pop one into the oven while we were recording. And it cooks by itself. At about 375 degrees. And about 35, 40 minutes later, you have this beautiful golden crusted pastry encased round of brie. One of the cool things about this product, other than the fact that it's delicious just as it is, there are instructions on the box for doing a little extra prep. Mm. So sometimes when you when you bake a brie inside of pastry, you might want to add like apricot jam or fig butter or something like that to the inside. So what you do is you take it out of the, of the freezer and you let it sit for about 30 minutes. So the crust on the outside just, it loosens just a little bit so it's not completely frozen. And you would put your jam or whatever you'd want to put on top of the brie and then put the crust back on top and bake it as usual. Open it up. Put in some preserves. Yeah, or how about some sun-dried tomatoes or sun-dried tomato pesto type of thing? Or maybe you could go spicy, like harissa yeah. uh, or something Or crunchy along those chili lines. onion. Ooh, that could be interesting. I'm very much about the crunchy chili onion. I'm going to cut into this one. The pastry is really golden and flaky and um, pretty great. No complaints here. That's a really great appetizer. Easy for you to do. Pretty cool stuff. That would be great if you were having a holiday lunch mm -hmm. and that with a salad. We interrupt this shopping list to talk with a very special guest who is way up north. Oh, all right, Santa. Well, close. It's Sophie at the Trader Joe's in Portland, Maine, only 3,201 miles from the North Pole. Practically next door. Hi, Sophie. Hi, Matt. Hi, Tara. Hey, is it cold there today? Because when we visited Maine for episode 50, you said that Portland is, and I quote, so, 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 so cold. <laughs> it is not so, so, so cold yet. It's been a pretty balmy fall. Heading out of fall and into the winter when this podcast airs, have you been able to see any changing of the colors on the trees? My commute into Portland provides an amazing array of foliage on my whole way down. It's been really nice, yes. As we head into December, looking into those December holidays, anything that you're hearing from Mainer customers? Well, everyone is excited about the almond kringle. The kringle is very popular here in Maine. I imagine you all get the kringle in California as well? We do. We don't understand it, but we do get it. <laughs> Well, there's not much to, to really understand. It's just a delicious pastry. And we get about four or five different flavors throughout the year. But the almond flavor is definitely the most popular flavor. But I, I think we all look forward to the jingle jangle the most. The buying team, the merchandising group, they've worked hard to secure a lot more jingle jangle. We have um, probably about 25% more tins of jingle jangle this year than last year, which at this point I'm almost nervous about, but I'm excited to hear that <laughs> Mainers at least nervous. are looking we are forward. We're going to sell all of that jingle jangle. You know, we could, we could reveal the jingle jangle news right about now, don't you think, Matt? Please. We could, we could. Yeah, so here's the jangle surprise, okay? I wish you were here to see this right now, Sophie. We have um, a box of jingle jangle pretzel twists. <gasps> now tell me. Okay, are they that's chocolate? a good reaction. They are indeed chocolate. They okay, are chocolate. Good. So they're large pretzel twists, like really crunchy, yes. covered in peanut butter candy coating, topped with candy coated dark chocolate gems and JoJo's cookie bits. Gems. Gems. Oh, Everyone loves gems. I wish you could see my face. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could yes. see this box. That is a thrill. And it's a good thing that you put the, the summer whites away after Labor Day because, you know, these look like you might have to have a shop vac with you. Um, these <laughs> yeah. could be messy in the best way. These Especially have been... if you eat them in your car like I eat most of my snacks. But the likelihood yes. of your finding a bonus gem under this car seat a month later is pretty high, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to put a blanket and wet naps in my car for okay. the winter so I can enjoy them on my way home every day. My advice to you, Sophie, when they come in, get them before they're gone. Oh, I will. I do the same with the jingle jangle. I get at least three. Okay. We heard that a lot of people drive really great distances to get to your store because you are the only yes, store in Maine. And people come from Canada, people come from, from all over northern New England. What do they stock up on for the winter? They definitely stock up on snacks and frozen foods. 
Okay. And you don't even need like a cooler driving home, right? Just roll down the window. <laughs> Well, they do bring their coolers, though. Okay. okay. They bring they're big coolers. They bring ice. And they sometimes will do one full shopping cart with frozen goods and another full shopping cart with just regular dry goods. And then, of course, the, the chicken stocks, pastas, the canned beans, you know. It's a long winter. You got to have all your all your solid basics. You forgot how uh, smoked trout is always on that list, too. And the, and, the, and the lightly smoked mussels, of course. Yes, okay, points for you. Thank you for that. I love that product. <laughs> That's, those are actually a real hit amongst the crew. They're so good with pasta. Hey, Sophie, what, what kind of message would you like to share with Trader Joe's customers and podcast listeners during the holiday season? I want to say soak up every minute together. I think for us um, in the Northeast, the winter really invites us to be home, to be with our families, to be with our friends. And I think the more togetherness that we have, the better. It's hard for me to speak for the folks in California. I don't know what you all do all year. We tan. For us, we're so reliant on the seasonality of our lifestyles. So I'm ready to eat. I'm ready to bake. I'm ready to watch great TV. And I'm ready to be with the people that I love. That's a pretty universal concept overall. I would say this is the time to absolutely just enjoy the company of the people that you love. I love that, and I thank you for it. That's great stuff. I think this is the time. Everything that comes in just for the holidays is incredibly special in its own way. My favorite Trader Joe's cheese of all time is the Toscano that's rubbed with cinnamon that we have in the fall. And in 2020, we introduced a Toscano cheese soaked in Chardonnay wine. This one proved to be an immediate success. It just flew out of that cheese case. People were instantly drawn to it. It has that nutty, creamy flavor profile that the that the Toscano is famous for, and that just a little bit of Chardonnay right around the edges, and you, it's subtle, but it's so satisfying. There aren't any visual signifiers that it's going to be different from regular Toscano. And yet, aromatically, certainly flavor-wise, it is, in fact, distinctly different. If you're making a, you know, a cheese board or any kind of a charcuterie tray that includes cheese, this is a great addition. And it's a cool cheese because it's slightly crumbly. It's not completely crumbly. Or you could just slice it and it looks pretty that way as well. You can grate it. It melts really well. I really like it with apples. Uh, that's the creamy Toscano cheese soaked in Chardonnay wine. And that is absolutely in stores for most of the holiday season. That will last in your fridge and the cheese drawer for months, truly. Yeah. I'm also thinking about a really neat product um, that is, is the second year that we've had it. It's known as Tête de Moine, which is French, um, which means monk's head. But it's from a French-speaking area of Switzerland that's right there on the French border in an area known as the Jura. This cheese has probably been around for maybe even a thousand years. It started at the Abbey of Belle made by monks from raw milk. It is produced and it has a protected designation of origin, so it must be made in a certain way, in a certain place. It's from cows that graze on pastures in like eight little villages. They typically use springtime milk to make this rich cheese. It's aged on spruce planks. We have it actually not as a block, not as a wheel, not as a chunk. We have it in rosettes. So they're almost little sort of curly Q shavings. Visually, they strike me as looking like cauliflower florets, sort of a creamy yellow ivory color. In 1982, a mechanic invented this spiral scraping machine called a girol which is the French word for chanterelle mushroom because the shavings look kind of like a chanterelle mushroom. And we have a container of these rosette 
or Giroux shavings, and the thin slice does for this cheese what thin slices do for prosciutto. When you eat it, it's almost like it's melting in your mouth, probably literally. This is a wonderful cheese. It's very limited, it's fun, and it's just kind of weird in a great way. Visually on a board with other cheeses and meats and crackers and other and other things, it looks stunning. This is ready for your beautiful photo-worthy cheese board. And for those of you making shopping lists, that's spelled T-E-T-E-D-E-M-O-I-N-E. So that's Tête de Moine. All right. Oh, and there's another cheese, Matt. We only carry this at the holidays. We are known at this point for having this microwavable fondue. We just call it La Fondue. It's in a little tub, sits in our cheese case, Take the lid off, put the entire tub into the microwave. In five minutes, you have fondue that is ready for whatever you might want to enjoy with cheese fondue. Turtlenecks not included, but you're welcome to wear one. I love this because it's so easy. Yes. You don't have to have the set. You don't have to have an open flame. Just have plenty of crusty bread, maybe even some gherkins or cornichons. Um, and whatever else you feel like having with fondue. Yeah, this this is one that my household waits for every year. We're so excited. It's just all of those great flavors that you want from fondue without any of the work. Thinking about La Fondue from France makes me think of France in general and how great the French are with chestnuts. Mm. They grow chestnuts, they enjoy chestnuts, and we have what I think might be one of the most convenient forms of chestnuts on earth. These are organic, peeled and cooked chestnuts. They are from France. They're in the refrigerated section um, with the other refrigerated produce. And they're so, so easy. I think of them as roasting on an open fire and I never know what to do with them after that. I guess people put them in stuffing. That's a classic thing. I have had some soups made with chestnuts. If you were to put these into stews or casseroles where you would put new potatoes, little baby p potatoes, I think that would be interesting. So how about uh, popping them into the oven with some nicely seasoned Brussels sprouts, a little olive oil, a little uh, salt and pepper. I love that. I think I would give the chestnuts a, a good rough chop so that you increase the surface area so that when they're roasting in the oven, they might get a little crispy and, and, and not be so soft. Okay. That sweetness is going to be a great counterpoint to the bitterness and the brassica funk of Brussels sprouts that we all love. Brassica funk. Brassica funk. See them Saturday night. <laughs> They're already peeled. They are fully cooked. So you could just take them out of the package and eat them if you were so inclined. They are organic. We have them pretty much just at the holiday season. I'm going to give myself a challenge to use chestnuts with celery, celery root, and cream of mushroom soup. Ooh. You know, all this working with chestnuts, my hands are a mess. What have we got here by way of lotion? OMG. For years and years and years, we have sold at the holidays uh, what we call the Ultra Moisturizing Hand Cream Trio. They're silver tubes of, of hand lotion. This year, we've kind of changed the formulations a little bit, added some scents that are really interesting, and popped it into a really cute package that has fun designs on the tubes themselves and has a little hanging ribbon at the top. So you could hang it from a Christmas tree, you could hang it from a stocking, you could just place it in front of somebody and not hang it on anything. And one thing formulation-wise that hasn't changed with this product, it is still 20% shea butter. And if you've looked for shea butter hand creams elsewhere, you'll know that 20% shea butter is not the norm. And when you can find it, it's really pricey. And this is certainly not that. This is a fantastic deal. We have three different fragrances, I think, in this new setup, and they're really nice. Orchid and olive oil, cherry blossom and almond oil, and lavender and bergamot. Be a great gift for really for anybody. Honestly, for me, it's a gift for myself. All three scents are great. Oh, you know what I forgot? we forgot to mention? The new packaging has removed all the plastic from the outside of the packaging. So it's a paperboard package. Which is great 
in and of itself, we continue to do the work to use as minimal an amount of materials when packaging the products that we offer as we can, and it looks a little even fancier. Yeah, for sure. Okay, what else is in our, uh, what we call HABA, the health and beauty aids category? This is a new product, and and I am just intrigued by this. It's a gummy bear flavored lip duo, which includes lip balm butter and an overnight lip mask. Now, I like gummy bears a lot, and I'm wondering, is there a general gummy bear flavor? Like, there's this platonic ideal of gummy bear essence, and this must be it in lip balm form. It's really cute. I will say that as a package. It's a wonderful pink color with illustrations of gummy bears, and this would hang really nicely on a holiday tree or off of a stocking somewhere, anywhere. This looks pretty neat. It's adorable, actually. I have a feeling this is going to be a big gift for the tween set for keeping your lips from getting completely chapped and just falling apart all winter long. Gummy bears to the rescue. Gummy bears to the rescue. We love that. Finally. (laughs) All right, we need our frozen desserts. Okay, we'll be right back. My gosh, this is quite a list. The holidays are going to be done before we're done. We've saved the best for last, perhaps. I'm reminded of my father telling me to desert the table. That was often what I got for dessert. (laughs) What would you like to do first? These. For all you fans of the mini Hold the Cone ice cream cones, time to rejoice because the peppermint Hold the Cones are back. They are so good. One of my favorite things about this particular Hold the Cone, the peppermint Hold the Cone, is the cocoa cone. I love that cocoa cone. (laughs) That's the box. (laughs) There are eight mini ice cream cones. Matt, would you like one? Oh, sure. These are just so good. And there's not a single Hold the Cone flavor that I don't like, but I do think that this peppermint one is my favorite, and I'm always excited when it comes back. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. These, I'm going to buy some extras so I can have them in my freezer for a while. Yeah, chocolate and chocolate and mint is a thing for me. Yeah, okay. And it's so cool in so many ways, actual temperature-wise, the coolness of the mint flavors, that menthol. Yeah, everything about it is great. These are just so cute. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tara, I see your peppermint hold the cone ice cream cones frozen treat from the dessert case of the frozen section, and I raise you another ice cream. Oh. Gingerbread ice cream. Okay. Here we go. Gingerbread ice cream with triple ginger snap cookie pieces and a gingerbread swirl. Okay, pass me a spoon. Okay. Oh, wow. You know what's weird about this? Because obviously it's cold, but it tastes almost warm. It's all of those gingerbread spices. Do you understand what I'm saying? Does that- I do. Oh, this is like um, <laughs> this is like our um, gingerbread cake mix, gingerbread mix mm. in ice cream form. There's a hint of molasses here, and of course, all those great spices. That is wonderful. And it's not overly sharp from a ginger perspective. No, no, there there isn't that spicy intensity, probably helped greatly by that creamy, creamy ice cream. This is our usual super premium approach. This is very thick, very dense. It's a heavy ice cream on purpose. You get a lot out of this pint. That's really good. I don't know what else to say about that. Our list is done. The actual Trader Joe's holiday shopping list is virtually endless, but this podcast is not. We'd like to share our thanks and our gratitude for you and everything that you do to get to our stores, your store, and spend time with us. And thanks to the crew for everything they do every day in every store across the country. We'll be back soon, maybe even before 2023, with another episode. To make sure you get it, hit that free subscribe or follow button. It is free and worth every penny. Until next time, thanks for listening. And thanks for listening. Happy Happy holidays. holidays.